Hi, my name is Brandon Sweeney, minister here at Global Outreach Community Church, and I want to welcome you to our online worship gathering. Here at GOCC, we are a church focused on growing people to be leaders in their families and communities, spreading the love of Jesus Christ throughout the world. I want to invite you to engage with us today so that we can connect with you. Feel free to comment, like, or share today's worship gathering. I also invite you to visit us in person on Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. Humble Middle School in Humble, Texas. Check us out on all of our social media platforms and don't forget, visit our website at globaloutreachcc.org. Lastly, I want you to know that your life matters because you matter to Christ. Now, join us as we worship God together.
Thank you, Lord. So we love the name of Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Father, we love your Hallelujah. name. Hallelujah. Yes, we do, Jesus. There's no name greater than your name. Yes. Hallelujah. There's no name greater than your name. No other God can be called the Father. Yes, no other God can be called a friend. Yes, no other God can be called Redeemer. Yes, no other God is coming back again. And how we Just lift your hands to him right now if you truly love him. Father, we acknowledge your presence. We love you in this place today. Come on, if you could just lift your voice and say, No other God, no other God can be called a father. Say, No other God, no other God can be called a friend. No other God can be called Redeemer. No other God. No other God. No other God coming back again. So how we love and how we love your name, Jesus. You're the beautiful one. We love your name. How we love. How we love your name, Jesus. You're the beautiful one.
hear you. We sing glory to, to the righteous one. We sing glory to the righteous one. We sing glory. your voice. We sing glory to the righteous one. Yeah. We love you. Hallelujah. Oh, how we love you. You are the one our, our hearts adore. Hallelujah. Yes. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name. Right where you are. Without any music, we want you to bow your heads, lift your hearts. Yes, glory to you. And this is your time to celebrate your yes. God. God has been so good to us. Amen, Jesus. And this morning, I want to give you three reasons to celebrate your God. Yes. Number one, he woke you up this morning. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That's enough to celebrate your God. Yes, hallelujah. You ready? Number two, he woke you up this morning. Yes. Well, you're going to get it before I get to the end. That's enough to celebrate your God. Can I give you number three? He woke you up this morning. And because he woke you up this morning, I just gave you three reasons to celebrate your God because he is worthy to be celebrated. It doesn't matter what you go through, what you've been through. He's always been there. He's always been by your side. He's been in the fire with you. He's walked you out of the fire. And that's why he's worthy to be praised. See, this morning, our musician got married yesterday, so he, he's at his well as celebrating his spouse. Yeah. Praise God. But here's what I know about me. I don't Woo! need music to celebrate. Yeah. I don't need an organist to celebrate. Hallelujah. Watch this. I don't even need the praise team to yeah. celebrate because I realize I've been flying across this world, and yeah. God has held the plane. Yeah. He's still the hand of the pilot. He's brought me here to praise him. So that's why I don't wait on anybody. Hallelujah. To praise God. Glory and this morning, I want to grow a church Jesus. that you get excited about the yes. name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is no name like the name of Jesus Hallelujah. in heaven nor on earth. Yes. So we Glory celebrate the name, name of Jesus this yes. morning. Hey, never come to church we and get too comfortable that God. you can't celebrate God. Yes. When you realize that you were sinking deep in your sin, yes. far from the peaceful Woo. shore, he Hallelujah. was the one to rescue you, and he put yes. your feet on solid rock. Can we give our God a hand clap Woo. of praise this morning? I came ready to have church. I came ready to have some church because yes. God has been too Woo. good. And can I give you another reason personally? He's giving me a sweet little grandbaby. And every yeah. time I see her, Woo. she's not my grandbaby by blood, but yeah. she is my grandbaby by relationship. Yeah. And every time she comes over, I'm spoiling that baby. And when yeah. I think about how I'm spoiling her, God spoil me. Yeah. He's giving me blessings I don't deserve. Yeah. He's made ways out of no ways. He put food on my table. He put clothes on my back. He's put a roof over my head. And how dare we come and not celebrate our God because he's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. So many people didn't wake up this morning. That could have been us. But we thank God for who he is. What he's done. We praise him for what he will do. And this morning, as we enter this period of prayer, as we pray, I want you to focus on the goodness of your king. 
Maybe this morning you are in a tough situation. Guess what? God already knows. Maybe there's just turbulence in your home. God already knows. Maybe your pennies are not adding up. There's more month than money. God already knows. Maybe you're having problem with your children. God already knows. Maybe your income and your job is shaky. God already knows. And since he knows, we're going to go to God with a spirit of expectancy and a spirit of faith. Knowing that our God will do anything but fail. So this morning, as we pray, I want to call out a few names this morning. We want to pray for one of our guests, Miss Leslie Williams, who's been having problems with her legs. Not trying to embarrass you. Can you just raise your hand so we can see who we're praying for this morning right here in the front? We're going to pray for her this morning because we know the same God that matriculated in the Bible is the same God who matriculates through his people today. We want to pray for Mr. Will Barker. Turn your back. Will, raise your hand. We celebrated the life of Will's mother yesterday. Will laid her to rest. We want to pray that God will comfort Will and his family in their moment of bereavement and grief. You know, death is certain but uncertain. It's certain because all of us will leave this place. It's uncertain because we don't know the time. And I'm so glad that God never tells me when I will die because I will worry myself to death. Thank God that he controls death. Yes. And since he controls death, I just trust God daily to provide for my needs. We want to continue to pray for the Sweeney family and Ashante's father. We want to pray that God would do something miraculous in his body. Yes. We want to continue to pray for Miss Jessie. Michelle, raise your hand. Miss Michelle in the back. Her, grandfa- uh, her grandmother, excuse me, 99 years old. We're praising God and believing she'll make 100. How about you? 99. I want to continue to pray for my father, Jeff Anderson, who's battling prostate cancer and also vascular dementia. God is still a healer. And I get up trusting God daily with the life of my father. And here's what I will tell you. With all the weight and the stuff that's on my shoulder, God is a burden bearer and a heavy load sharer. We want to continue to pray for Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter is somewhere around here serving. He lost his wife about a year, year and a half ago, niece. Um, just in a bad accident, we want to pray that God will heal her body and he will continue to comfort Mr. Carter. And then we want to pray for our musician who's out, Carrington. We celebrate God that he got married. I don't know about you, but I believe in the sanctity of marriage. So he's out celebrating and we on tracks, but guess what? The tracks are not God and God are not the tracks. And that's why I can still celebrate God when the tracks mess up and when they hit, when they sound right and when they don't sound right because my faith is not in Carrington or the tracks, it's still in God. Hallelujah. And then we want to pray for those, maybe you didn't submit a prayer request card, but you're going through something. I want you to know your God knows. And many times we think God has forgotten about us. He has not forgotten about you. We used to say that God is an on-time God. Can I tell you why he's on time? He's never left you. He's always been with you. So as our heads are bowed, our hearts are lifted, as Alon plays softly, we want to go to God in prayer. Knowing that our God is so powerful. He is so dependable. He is so trustworthy that nothing escapes the eyes of our God. So, Father, you heard every prayer request. Those that have been spoken and those who have not spoken their prayer requests publicly. Thank you that you move behind the scenes of our lives. You go before us, making every crooked place straight. You connect all the dots. You love us so much that Jesus died in our place to bring us back to you. And that's why you are worthy to be praised. So this morning, we pause to celebrate the name of Jesus. Thank you that there's power in the name of Jesus. Thank you that there's healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you that there's strong deliverance in the name of Jesus. 
Thank you that Jesus died in our place to reconcile us back to you. So we celebrate Jesus. We extol Jesus. We bless his name. We reverence his name. We adore Jesus, our great high priest, our elder brother. We thank you that Jesus ascended back to heaven and he sent the comforter to live on the inside of us. So God, we thank you that you have not left us as orphans, but you provided comfort. So we pray for Will this morning. God, would you give him comfort? We pray for his family. Would you touch like never before. God, they need you. They're crying out to you. There are some people in this family that don't know you. And I pray through Will's walk, through Will's talk, through Will's attitude, that they will see the risen Savior in Will, that they will see Jesus living in Leah, and they would ask, what must I do to be saved? Because in every opportunity of death, there's life. So we pray that you would touch that family. We pray for Miss Leslie this morning, God. We stretch our hands toward her this morning in faith, believing, God, that you can touch her legs. So we ask that you would touch right now, that you would heal right now, God. Allow healing to flow from the crown of her hands to the sole of her feet. You made that body. You created it. You know every cell. You know every joint. And in the name of Jesus, we claim healing right now in that name. Continue to show her how powerful you are remind her how faithful you are so we pray that that body will line up with your word and in the name of Jesus we pray for Miss Jessie this morning thank you for 99 years touch her right where she's at allow her to feel the spirit of the living God like never before thank you for her attitude thank you for her demeanor God thank you that she's excited about Jesus so God thank you for what you're doing now touch her right now in the name of Jesus we're not going to ask that you would go you are already there so since you're there touch her right now we pray for Mr. Carter this morning Touch him right now, God. Touch his niece as she continues to recover. Touch his family. Give him comfort even as he grieves. Grieving is difficult, but grieving is necessary. So we pray that you would heal his broken heart. We thank you for Carrington. We thank you for adding to this church. But then, God, we thank you for the blessedness of marriage. Thank you that you brought the woman to the man. Thank you, God, that you blessed the sanctity of marriage. So would you bless this marriage? Would you bless their household? Would you bless their coming in as well as their going out, God? Would you bless the fruit of their body? Would you bless their finances? We plead the blood of Jesus over his house right now. We thank you for the blood. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So allow the blood to flow and cover his marriage. And then God, we pray for people today who need you. They desperately need you. They're broken, they're hurt. They haven't shared anything with anybody, but you know, and since you know, God, would you move, not for our sake, but for your own sake, not for our glory, but for your glory. Thank you right now, God, why you putting it in my spirit, God. We pray for Zandria, God. Touch her right now, God. Remind her of her value to you in the kingdom, that her identity is in you, not in people, not in places, not in things, but in you. So we pray that you would touch her heart right now, that you would arrest her mind in the name of Jesus. We pray for every young adult right now. We pray for every teenager. Touch him right now, God. We need you, God. This nation needs you. We can't turn on the television without agendas. We can't go to the movies without people pushing agendas. God, we need to get to the point where we push Jesus and not our own agenda. So remind us it's all about Jesus. Jesus crucified. Jesus buried in a tomb. But Jesus ascending back to heaven. So we thank you now. 
we bless you now. We honor you now. Listen, I'm not moving too fast. This is your time this morning. This is your space to worship your God. Yes, we got structure, processes, and systems, but nothing trumps the spirit of the living God. If you want to lift your hands to worship your God, this is your time. Jesus, we worship you. We adore you in the beauty of holiness. We thank you for the sweetness of your spirit. Jesus. So we love you, Lord. You've been so good to us, better than we've been to ourselves. So we thank you. That you're a keeper. You're so righteous, Lord. You're so righteous, Lord. You're so awesome, God. You're so awesome, Lord. As the praise team continues to sing, if you want to have your seat, you may take a seat, but we just want to worship God. Global family. Thank you for partnering with us as we serve our local community and international partners. Your partnership allows us to fulfill our vision of growing people to be leaders in their families and communities, spreading the love of Jesus throughout the world. Through your faithfulness, we're able to serve snacks to families at one of our local elementary schools, host our annual Thanksgiving Boxes of Love event, bless families in the urban inner city area through gifts of love, as well as partner with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes International Ministry. There are two ways to give. You can give online at globaloutreachcc.org or you can give through our text to give at 281-809-6778. Giving is a privilege and responsibility for those who have received from God the gift of eternal life. As we give from biblical motives in line with biblical principles and priorities, God will bless with his results. Thank you for partnering with us financially. I wanted to spend more time in worship, but then I was struggling. And thank God that that iPad confirmed what I needed to do. I believe worship sets the tone of any service. It opens us up to what God wants to say to us. But then preaching gives us what we need. And I want to continue in our series. We're going to be in our series six to eight weeks on the four in the core. And I said this last week. When I'm done with this series, I want you to come to me and say, Pastor, that was so simple. I could have preached that. And that's a badge of honor to me. Because I don't want to preach so high that you can't leave with something to apply to your life. 
But I want you to leave saying, Pastor, wow, I got it. So last week I had a few members come to me. Pastor, nobody ever shared me, shared with me how to share the gospel. Thank you. Thank you. If you missed that sermon, you can go online and the sermon is there, the four. Here's what we shared last week. 60% of New Testament believers have never shared their faith, the gospel, or their testimony. And we dug in, and we realized even in the church, we are great about teaching on marriage, giving, healing, God's peace, God's mercy. We're great about theological truths, eschatology, end time. We're great about teaching about the gifts of the Spirit. We argue over the gifts. We argue over women in the pulpit. We argue over everything, and it's rare that we argue over how to share the gospel. So last week, I gave you four simple ways on how to share the gospel. Why? Because 60% of New Testament believers have never shared the gospel. And if we're going to build this church, and if we're going to expand the kingdom, it can't be on the pastor. Because as I articulated last week, I've never gone to prison to stay long. I've been to minister But when I walked out and that door slammed and I heard, I knew that's not where I wanted to be. I can't minister to anybody who's been in prison. But those who've been in prison, they can take their testimony and minister to those who have been. I've never had a drug addiction. I can't preach to those who need to experience the power of the living God to break that drug addiction because I've never been on drugs. Now, what I'm not going to tell you is how God had to deliver me. But what I will tell you is I hadn't been perfect. And there are a certain group of people I can minister to because of my experience. So this morning, my question to you, who is it in your family that God is calling you to minister to to share the gospel that you know they are outside the will of God. They are not living God's ordained purpose for their lives. You know that they are gifted, but you also know they have never trusted Christ as Savior in your family, at the family reunion, in your house, the crew that you run with. Who is it that you need to minister the gospel to? So last week we said four ways, four ways still on my bracelet. Four quick ways. One, we need to let people know God loves them. God loves you. His love is unconditional. That's the first simple way of sharing the gospel. God loves you so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins. You don't need to be an expert on the Bible, but you need to tell them God loves you. Here's the second way. Sin separates you. We have to get to the point where we are unafraid to use the word sin. We've gotten to the point as a church where sin is the boogeyman now. We've become so seeker friendly that we won't even use sin. But last week I showed you Romans 3.23, they used the word sin. Romans 6.23, sin. Isaiah 59.2, sin. David, when he prayed Psalm 51, against you and you only have I sinned against. So if the New Testament writers and characters can use the word sin, why can't we use it? But people need to know God will rescue you from your sin. God loves you. Sin separates you. Number four. Number three. Watch this. Jesus rescues you. We need to net people know about the saving grace and power of Jesus Christ. He died. 
Here's number four. Simple. Will you trust Jesus? Just as much as we promote our favorite restaurant, we can promote Jesus. I'm telling you, I'm going to be so simple. When you leave, you're going to say, now, that was elementary. We give free advertisement for everything else but the church in Jesus. Last night, we did our family night, Mia Bella. I had a kale, spinach, salad with grilled shrimp. So good. I made a post on Facebook. Did you know I gave free advertisement to Mia Bella? Why can't I post it on my page on social media about Jesus? You post everything else. Will you trust Jesus? And we lead them to the cross and to Jesus, Romans 10, 9, and 10, by simply praying for them. But having them confess Jesus as Savior, not you. Four simple ways. Here's what I want to deal with this morning. I may not get to it all, but we got six to eight weeks, and I can calmly walk through this. The eight essentials of the faith, I call it the core. I gave you number one, sharing the gospel. Number two, we want you to understand that you can live by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's a essential of the faith. I got up this morning. I was mulling this sermon over in my mind. And I went to my dresser drawer. And I got this adapter out. And I just started looking at it. I can go relatively anywhere in the world, plug this in, and get a charge. Because I got so many different ways to plug in to get electricity. Stay with me this morning. It's right here. And all I got to do is plug it in. But recently at home, on our kitchen counter, my phone wasn't receiving a charge. My watch wasn't. So I said, baby, something wrong. I go to the breaker box. You know how you wives like to do it. You're going to fix it if we don't move fast enough. I didn't move fast enough. So my wife went out there with no shoes on. Go on, walk through that. Girl, you bet. Do you? She had to <laughs> hit every baby. If you read the breaker box, you will see what's written next to it. She clicking everything. She finally got it to work. I plugged it in. My phone started charging. My watch started charging. And anywhere I go in the world, I can get a charge. The reason why it's charged is because I connected to the power source. And you are saved. And you are living in the church. And the problem that we don't live a victorious life is because we don't connect to the power source. And the power source is the Holy Spirit. That God has deposited his spirit into you. And we don't rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to be simple, but I'm coming right to you, right where you are. You know why we cuss people out? Because our flesh gets so unruly and we don't depend on the Holy Spirit. You know why we give people peace of mind? If you're like me, I'm so crazy, I need every peace of my mind that I can have. You know why we give people a peace of mind? A peace of our mind? Because we don't depend on the Holy Spirit. Can I be real this morning? Do you know why we tell people where to get off and where to get on? It's because the Holy Spirit won't even control our mouth. God has given you power. And the power is not to cause goosebumps. Can I say that again? You're talking to somebody. They confirm something. You get goosebumps. Ooh, the Holy Spirit. Listen, the Holy Spirit is bigger than goosebumps. He's bigger than just running around the church. He's bigger than jumping and hollering and screaming because after you jump, after you holler, and after you scream, you got to come down and walk straight up out this building. I'm being simple. And I want this church, whether you're online or in this building, 
to realize you can live a victorious life simply because you have the power of the Holy Spirit living in you. So we're going to talk about this morning. We won't finish living with God's power. And too many Christians are living a powerless life. Here's number one. Here's number one. Here's what you got to understand if you're going to live with God's power. God makes you new. When you trust Christ as Savior, you are a new creature or a new creation. All things have passed away. All things become new. Now, if you grew up in church like I did, they had this song or saying, hey, um, I, I became new and my hands did too. I'm sorry, y'all. I still got some crusty hands. My feet did too. I still got some problems with my feet. Here's what I'm saying. It doesn't change the features of my hand, but what changes is what my hand grabs. Ouch, I'm preaching this morning. It changes where my feet goes. That if I used to go here, now that I've been transformed by the power of Jesus Christ, and I know that God has given me a life to live victoriously, when I get ready to go that way, I turn and go this way because I realize God has healed me from that. God has delivered me from that. God has saved me from that. And I don't want to go there because that may capture my heart again. I'm glad I forgot this guy's name. He got saved out of strip clubs. We're meeting. He said, man, I'm going back to the strip club so I can minister. I said, bro, you just came out of them three weeks ago. Yeah, but I got to minister. I said, if I were you, I would minister at a distance. You fresh out the club, bro. And the same thing that got you, it'll show up again. God made you new. And when you become a uh, believer in Jesus Christ, you have new expectations. It's not about performance. It's about your value and relationship in the kingdom. A couple of scriptures. Here you go. If you're writing, write this down. Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is not I who lives, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. In other words, now that you're saved, you don't live selflessly. You don't live for yourself. You live by the power of the living God through the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside and you walk in newness of life because you have resurrection power. Watch this. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the tomb is the same spirit living in you. So why can't you be victorious? Why can't you be an overcomer? Why can't you live in strength? Why can't you have joy and peace? Because I realize joy and peace don't determine my altitude. Jesus does. Two weeks ago in the Dominican Republic, let me go back there. Missionary house. Cold water, every shower we took was cold. The water was turned off sporadically. I won't even tell you the stuff that was in the toilet. Let you imagine. We couldn't even flush the toilet. We had to cook the food we purchased from the store. At night, it was hot. We would have to place fans by our bed. Mosquitoes biting us. We wake up, mosquitoes bite all over us. Some people, you thought they was in the ant bed. We had to get up, get our devotionals in, get on the van and drive to our destination to share the gospel. Here's what I learned that week. I'm too, comfort, I'm too comfortable with the stuff God has blessed me with. Am I the only one in the building this morning? And I realized I hadn't watched TV really in four weeks. I got more joy and more peace. I'm in less arguments. I don't deal with the political stuff. Somebody asked me, did you preach on abortion? I said, no, they talked about it enough on the TV. I'm going to preach the gospel. 
And if people don't like the gospel, they can find another church and another ministry because all that stuff that we're arguing about is dividing the body of Christ. And what I'm trying to tell you is when you realize your importance in the kingdom and how valuable you are and how God loved you and he saved you from the guttermost to the uttermost, you get your mind off yourself and on other people and you live in such a way by the power of the Holy Spirit that people can see that you've been with Jesus. And today, y'all, we need some people who've been with Jesus. The church needs people who've been with Jesus. Here's a second one. Write this down. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 through 17. For the love of God, or Christ, controls us. Did you hear that? The love of Christ controls us. Having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. He died for all, so that those who live would no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose on their behalf. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one by flesh, even though we have known Christ by flesh, yet now we know him by this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Christ died for you. He died for you. Your new creation. It's time for you to start acting new. It's time for you to start living new. Because of the relationship of Christ. We no longer look at life pre-Christ. So let me put this down. My pastor used to tell me, if you're going to teach, two ways you could teach. You could put it in the law for the giraffes. You can put it on the ground for the hippos. If you put it on the ground for the hippos, the giraffe can stretch its long neck down and eat, and the hippo eat at the same time. The problem with the church is we're putting everything so spiritually deep that only giraffes can eat, and the hippos starve. How's your marriage this morning? Could it be your arguments? Is because you won't give control to the Holy Spirit. He doesn't force himself on you. But when you submit, there are some stuff that you want to say to your spouse. That he'll convict you and you won't say it. You preaching this morning, E, thank you. Because you got control. It doesn't mean that you're weak. It's actually meekness. And meekness is strength under control. The reason why the horse has the bit in his mouth is not that the horse can't do what he wants to do, but the rider controls the horse by moving the bit. And the Holy Spirit wants to move you by controlling the spiritual bit that could be in your mouth. Slow down, y'all. He wants to do more than just have you shout around the church. He wants to do more than just lay hands and somebody's healed. That's only part of the gospel. It's not the full gospel. He wants you to live victoriously. Here's the second thing. God is with you. Write that down. God is with you. You cannot transform your life on your own. Transformation doesn't happen overnight. And that's the reason why I told this guy, don't go back in the club. Because you think you're delivered. I don't want to get too graphic, but I said, it only takes the right woman, dancing the right way, and you hooked. Can I make it make sense? He just delivered y'all crack. Why are you back in the crack house two weeks trying to share gospel tracks? Get in the church, sit, soak, serve, and then see how God wants to minister with you. Our job is to partner with the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict. So he's with you. How do I know? He's giving you the Holy Spirit. 
And the Holy Spirit is with you to guide you, to lead you. He is with you at all times, and he gives you power to live a victorious life through Jesus Christ. God wants you to be victorious in your finances, in your mental aptitude, in your body, on your job, in your marriage, with your children who are not doing what you want them to do. And if you realize when you are that age, you didn't do it, so you don't have to get mad because you didn't do it. Stop wanting them to live a life that you couldn't even lead at their age. So you start being patient with them. You set your boundaries, but you lead by boundaries in the word of God. But he's given all of us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is to guide us. Here we go. John 14, write it down. John 14, 16 through 18. And I want you to pick up on these words. I will ask the Father, Jesus praying, and he will give you another helper so that he may be with you forever. The helper is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him nor knows him. But you, you know him because he remains with you and he will be in you. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. Here's what I want you to realize. Jesus uses the word helper, comforter, and spirit of truth. We run by that. Helper, comforter, and the spirit of truth. The word comfort comes from another Greek word that attaches itself to the Holy Spirit called the parakletos or kletos. Depends on what class you go to. One means that the Holy Spirit is your helper. Another one means that he is your comforter. He will help you in your darkest, bleakest moments. And the reason why we don't get help is because we don't ask God to help us. When was the last time you asked God to help you instead of taking matters in your own hands? And if you're like me, when I take it into my own hands, I make it worse than it already was. And God is saying, if you would just listen, if you would shut your mouth, and before you say what you want to say to Miss Cheryl, because you know Cheryl is from Yale Village, and Cheryl going to come right back at you. So instead of y'all arguing, why don't you just be quiet, pastor, preacher, Eric James Anderson, sit down somewhere and just be quiet and let it blow over. I'm just as transparent as it's going to get. But instead of letting the Holy Spirit work it out, I'm going to agitate. Do I got any agitating husbands in the building? I'm sorry, wrong people. What about agitating wives in the building? I know my issue. And I'm asking the Holy Spirit to work on me. What about you this morning? He's your helper. He's your comforter. That word means to come alongside to assist. The Holy Spirit does not work instead of us, but he works in spite of us, in us, and through us. Here's another one. We get the English word comfort from two other Latin words, which means strength or with strength. He's not only walking aside of you, but he's in you giving you strength. And when you realize he's in you giving you strength, you can handle anything that the Lord allows to come your way. So stop blaming the devil for everything. The devil is not doing some of this. God allows certain things to come into your life to grow your faith, to test you, to show you where you are in Christendom, and you ain't all that you think you are. Have you been there? And there are some times I would say, Reverend, did you really say that? Did you think that? And God reminds me, oh, yeah, you thought you was here, but you here. You still got some growing to do. It's the Holy Spirit that convicts us of that. He's with you. And as we go through this series, I want you to know that you can be victorious because he's in you. Write this scripture down, John 15, 26. He says, when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, namely the spirit of truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify about me. Can you see he keeps saying helper, comforter, spirit of truth. How about John 16 and 7? But I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I am leaving. For if I do not leave, the helper will not come. But if I go, I will send him. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit for you. 
but we don't depend on him. So here's my question. Almost done. What area in your life do you need the Holy Spirit to help you? Rhetorical question. Because if I go down every road, we may say the same thing, but we're going to say something different. Where is it? What do you need the Holy Spirit to really mature you in your faith? And when you find out what that is, ask the Lord to mature you. Here's another scripture, John 16, 12 through 14. John 16, 12 through 14. I'll read that last one. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them at this present time. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own, but whatever he heals, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me for he will take from mine and will disclose it to you. I have a goal of walking three miles a day, five days a week. This week, I walk six days a week, 20 miles. I have a goal of losing 10 pounds by the end of the month. I lost four last week. Changed my diet, walked. As I'm walking, I said, Lord, if you show me things to come, you can even show me my haters and my enemies. And I said, God, show me those who are not for me. God started yesterday. The Holy Spirit will show you things to come. Because some people you're running with, you think they're in your camp. they just next to you, see what you got. And the very people we think that are for us are the very people that are against us. But the Holy Spirit will show you that if you slow down and go to prayer. And you don't always have to be by your bed. You can walk like I'm doing and ask God to show you. Can I go a step further? You can ask God to show you when to move and when not to move. There are some traps I've avoided because I wanted to do something. The Holy Spirit said, no, don't do it. And I went against what I wanted to do to trust the Holy Spirit, and it worked out better. Since y'all listening, there are some relationships you don't need to be in, but you want to do it anyway. And the Holy Spirit has showed you all the flags. But because we want it so bad, we do it. Here's the last point, and I'm done. The Holy Spirit gives you power over temptation, sin. He gives you power to be a bold witness. But here's the third bullet point. God will lead you. God will lead you. John 16, 13, A. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will. Don't move until the Lord tells you to move. I don't know who that's for. Don't you move until he tells you to move. Because if you move too quick, you're going to set yourself back. I shared with the individual this week. I said, person A, the relationship you in is not God ordained, it's man ordained. And the reason why you're going through these problems is because God never ordained it. You got ahead of God. And the blowback is because you got ahead. The stuff you're experiencing is because you got ahead. If you would just slow down and not rush it, God would do what he wants. As I close this morning, slow down. He's with you. What's for you is for you. The devil in hell can't take what's for you. So since you know it's for you, slow down. Hook up with the power source, the Holy Spirit. Plug 
into him and allow him to plug into you, allow him to lead you because he's in you, he's with you, and he will guide you unto all truth. To be continued. Father, we thank you for a simple yet powerful message of the Holy Spirit. That his role is bigger than just goosebumps. That you have literally given your spirit, your power, through the personality of the Holy Ghost. Wow, what a great time in the Lord. Thank you so much for watching GOCC Online. We hope you were blessed by today's message. And if you made a decision to follow Christ, or if you would like to take the next step in your faith journey, or you would love to receive prayer, we'd love to connect with you. Visit us at globaloutreachcc.org, click on the Get Connect link, scroll to the bottom of the page, and click on the Prayer Request link. If you would like to partner with us financially, you can give online at globaloutreachcc.org or through text to give at 281-809-6778. Again, I want to personally invite you to join us next Sunday, 9.30 a.m. at Humble Middle School in the Atascacita area. God bless you and have a great week.